Good evening, Robert Scribbler. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. It is August 24th, 2018. Now for this segment, I'm going to provide for you our weekly Arctic sea ice and Arctic climate update. We've got a lot of information to share with you, so buckle your seatbelts, hold on to your hats, we're gonna go through it. Now, the first bit of information that I would like to share with you is a loss trend for the oldest sea ice and typically thickest sea ice in the Arctic, as provided here by Zach Labe and the New York Times. And it's worth noting that sea ice, old sea ice and thick sea ice have been greatly reduced since the middle 1980s with an apparent record low for 2018 in the extent of oldest sea ice. Now, oldest sea ice is one of the stabilizers for the Arctic sea ice in general, and it's loss of this sea ice that has been in indicated by events like the opening of water north of Greenland during this year. This overall trend of loss is, is concerning because as older ice, as multi-year ice shrinks, you shift more and more to the potential of a periodically ice-free summer condition or longer and longer ice-free conditions for the Arctic total. Of course, we haven't hit that kind of a climate threshold yet, but you can see the trend toward that threshold in the sea ice age graphic here. Now, it's worth noting that for 2018, we have seen persistent low pressure systems in the Arctic, and what this has tended to do is spread out the Arctic sea ice and thin it. Now, this is, this is a bit prophylactic or a bit defensive during summertime due to the fact that higher sea ice extents, relative sea ice extents, tend to reflect more of the higher angle sunlight back into space and help to keep the Arctic overall cooler. However, despite the fact that, that we have had this happen, Arctic sea ice extents have remained between fifth and sixth lowest on record for this summer. Approximately 2.7 million square kilometers below the 1980s averages, and though still a bit above by about a million square kilometers, the record lows set for the date in 2012. Now, I'd just like to call your attention to average temperatures in the 80 degree north and above zone as recorded by the Danish Meteorological Institute. And over recent weeks, these temperatures have remained a bit above average. The longer these temperatures remain above average, the more melt impetus continues, tends to continue on into September and potentially approaching October. So this is a measure we're gonna to wanna to look at more and more over the coming days. Some regions that we might be concerned about for continued melt over the coming days include the region of this East Siberian Sea, which has a, a wide region of very thin ice, as well as the near Beaufort Sea Ice which is starting to extend toward the 80 degree north latitude line. It's worth noting that the Beaufort sea ice has remained more intact this year, even as the Atlantic side sea ice has been greatly reduced with, with new record lows achieved. This has helped to influence the lifting away of thick ice from the coast of Greenland, as well as a general melt trend in this zone. Taking a look at the satellite shot, we see that a lar large portion of the Arctic is occluded by clouds, although the wide open area of water in the Beaufort Sea is visible along with thinning ice in that zone. And the, the 
much reduced ice in the Atlantic region is also quite visible with a large area of open water north of Svalbard. Although the region of open water north of Greenland is occluded by clouds in recent satellite shots. Wildfires continue to burn across the North American West, spewing out very large smoke plumes that are then picked up by the upper level winds and circulated in the broad meanders of the jet stream of the present climate state. Now, wildfires in north central Siberia have been tamped down quite a bit during recent days by large storms moving through the region. And this is this is a bit of a positive indicator for 2018. Large wildfires in northern regions are a climate fingerprint or a climate change indicator. And we have certainly seen more intense wildfire activity over the boreal and arctic zones during recent years. So overall, looking ahead, it appears that arctic temperatures are predicted to remain above normal, although above normal arctic temperatures that we presently see in the upper latitudes in the, the north of the 80 degree north latitude line appear to be flushed out in the recent GFS model forecast for the next 10 days. Warm air continues to circulate in through ridge patterns running up through Siberia and Alaska throughout the, the time period. Although as we get into the latter portion, cooler airs tend to invade the high north, even though warmer airs tend to get pushed into the surrounding regions between the 70 and 80 degree north latitude line, which might help to enhance sea ice melt some in the Beaufort region, although by the end of the frame, we do have some cooler than normal conditions over the East Siberian Sea, with warmer than normal conditions dominating the edge zone. So, Overall, it appears that the trajectory for Arctic sea ice by the end of 2018 melt season appears to be in the range of 4.2 to 4.4 million square kilometers. And we'll be looking at this as an indicator for the, at the end of this melt season, but it doesn't look like we are going to be in the range of, of hitting new record lows unless there are some very serious surprises coming down the road, which does not appear to be the case at present. Thank you for joining me, and I'll be chatting with you soon.